Hauliers have designated this as National Lorry Week, but they're warning that the escalating migrant crisis in Calais is preventing the movement of goods and threatening their safety and their livelihoods. There are now an estimated 7,000 migrants camped in northern France, and at least 16 have died in or near the Channel Tunnel since the summer, as they become increasingly desperate to get into the UK. The Road Haulage Association says the industry is suffering because of intimidation of drivers and attacks on vehicles by migrants and says many smaller family-run firms could be put out of business. Well, we can speak now to the Labour MP, Rob Flello. He's chairman of the all-party parliamentary group on freight transport. Welcome to The Daily Politics. How would you describe the situation in Calais? Good afternoon. Well, um, the situation in Calais is, is actually really desperate. If you're a professional driver trying to uh, get either into the UK or out of the UK, you face intimidation, you face threats, uh, people brandishing knives at you, damaging your vehicle, breaking into your vehicle. It is really serious at the moment and indeed has been escalating, not getting any better, over recent weeks and months. Is it enough measures that the government have announced recently to protect lorry drivers with a secure waiting area? I mean, is that really going to change the situation dramatically? Not at all. I mean, it's, it's actually quite farcical, unfortunately, because uh, at the moment there are supposedly secure waiting areas. Uh, I was hearing uh, from Andy from Brownton Transport only on Thursday night at about 3 a.m. Uh, they were in a secure area or supposedly secure area. There were no police to be seen, no border force agents. And what there were were hundreds and hundreds of refugees threatening with knives breaking into vehicles, stowing away in vehicles, and every time uh, that he and others try to raise this with either Calais Port Security or with the uh, uh, Border Force themselves, they were told it either wasn't in their jurisdictional area or they couldn't help. And as I say, there was no sign of any police, and this is what's happening night after night after night. No, obviously, prospect of the situation improving then, unless some serious measures are taken. What are you proposing the government does? Well, I think what the, the government need to do is to step in quickly and actually take some urgent action because uh, we can't carry on like this. Yeah, what? So the sort of things that need to be happening, uh, we need to have more police presence, but actually what we really need is places like the jungle to have those who are applying for refugee status have their applications processed much, much more quickly, get that dealt with really quickly. Those who are entitled to refugee status should be granted asylum and helped on, and those who aren't should be taken back to the country they're from, and let's get rid of the jungle and let's resolve this problem once and for all, rather than just playing at it, quite frankly, which is what the government, both British and French, are doing. Right. I mean, isn't that the problem, that it, it, it needs cooperation on both sides, and that hasn't uh, been in evidence over the last few years? I mean, this problem has been going on for, for years, hasn't it, really? I mean, it's got worse, obviously, recently, um, and successive governments have just turned a blind eye to it. I mean, is there now a feeling that the camps are just going to be, the jungle, as you call it, are going to be there permanently? Well, the, the jungle and other camps cannot be there permanently. I mean, at the moment, we have something like 2.3 million trucks going in and out of um, the port of Dover and Juro Tunnel. That's about 90% of UK imports and exports uh, are going through. That's going to increase as we run up to Christmas. And at the same time, refugees are going to become more and more desperate as their, their living conditions deteriorate and they're desperate to get into the UK. So, uh, really, the, it's, it's certainly been escalating over recent years. It's got far, far worse over recent months. And if this action is taken, for example, the 13 tragic deaths of migrants in the tunnel will just get worse. And the knock-on effect, not just to their families, but of the drivers of those trains. Uh, the, the situation with um, hauliers having been threatened will get worse. And, and a lot of drivers are simply saying, look, we've had enough. We can't take this level of threat and intimidation and the effect it's having on our families, and they are saying that they won't do this run anymore. Right. And that will have a real impact. Uh, it's over a billion pounds already, the impact on the UK economy. Right. And, and do you accept that a few of the hauliers, and it may only be a few, are in league with some of these people, smugglers? Um, I mean, there are fines, but that probably isn't enough to, to counter it. Well, I think there are certainly fines, and, and we are seeing those fines being uh, hit onto people. But uh, you say that, I'm, I'm sure there, there will be a very tiny number of hauliers that uh, are in cahoots uh, with smugglers, but actually the vast majority don't want to be pulling up on the main road because somebody's either lit a fire or, worse still, is actually lying in the road. And whilst they're distracted like that, the, the locks are broken on the back of the vehicle and people are getting on board. And drivers are actually having to take the law into their own hands and gather together 
uh, to, to try and, in groups, get, uh, get uh, uh, people who are smuggled uh, onto the back of their vehicles out. Uh, again, going back to the situation on Thursday night where oh. driver after driver was working together to offload people in the back of their vehicles, and as I say, some of whom were brandishing knives. Oh. That can't happen. That can't be allowed to happen. Just yes or no, are ministers listening? I don't think they are. I think they are playing lip service to this problem, but they're hoping that the bad weather will make the problem go away. It won't. It will make it worse, both in terms of how desperate the refugees become, but also in terms of the supposedly increased volume of vehicles coming in and out of the UK.